the U.S. Coast Guard and the Canadian Navy just wrapped up their annual hunting trip. Hunting modern day pirates, they tracked and caught their quarry, seized their booty, and then blew up their prize. All in international waters of the Pacific Ocean. The mob reporter here with an inside look at a drug interdiction mission, a joint United States-Canada operation scouring the high seas off the coast of Central and South America, looking for smugglers who are trying to get their illicit loads from their source in the south to their markets in the north. Let me tell you about it. The unending cat and mouse game of narcos trying to get their product into North America plays out here in high definition. During a three-month deployment of two Canadian Navy coastal defense vessels working with the United States Coast Guard during counter-narcotic operations in the Caribbean Sea and the Eastern Pacific. Their mission is sort of the modern-day version of hunting pirates. The tools and targets have changed, as has the legal framework, but the rough mechanics are the same as chasing pirates in centuries past, the rogue seafarers which seized popular imagination, from the classic book Treasure Island to Johnny Depp's movie role as Captain Jack Sparrow in the Pirates of the Caribbean. The targets here don't feature such colorful figures. There were several big hits in the last few months. Here's what happened. Ships and planes are constantly scouring the seas for suspicious vessels. Some are more suspicious than others. There are three main types of smuggling vessels. Go-fast boats, narco-subs, and fishing boats. The go-fast boats are just that, speed boats that try to power their way to their destination, hoping to get there before they are caught. The narco-subs, more accurately called semi-submersibles, or low-profile boats, go for stealth over speed. They try to slip past unnoticed because most of the hull is below the water and difficult to see. Fishing and pleasure crafts, on the other hand, use a different type of subterfuge. They try to blend in as innocent ships on the open sea. All three types were busted during the operation. In February, at the start of the operation, a Canadian Air Force long-range patrol aircraft, a CP-140 Aurora, spotted a suspicious fishing boat and helped guide the U.S. Coast Guard to it, where it was seized and 860 kilos of coke were found. That's worth about $32.5 million. On March 21, 2021, a U.S. Navy P-4 Maritime Patrol aircraft spotted a go-fast boat in the Eastern Pacific and radioed its position to the HMCS Brandon. The Canadian Navy ship changed course and speed to intercept. The smugglers didn't give up easily. When the naval ship came into view, they gunned their engines while dumping bales of cargo overboard into the sea. The Canadian sailors launched two rigid hull inflatable boats with members of the U.S. Coast Guard's law enforcement team on board. One boat headed to collect the jettisoned cargo, while the other headed to catch the speedboat. A U.S. Coast Guard helicopter came to slow it down, firing warning shots across its bow, but when that didn't work, they sunk rounds right into its motor, forcing it to a stop. Three suspected smugglers were detained, along with 870 kilos of coke, worth an estimated $33 million. Two days later, on March 23, 2021, the HMCS Saskatoon was tipped to a target spotted by the P-3 airplane. They gave chase to a narco-sub. Again, two inflatable speedboats were launched carrying a Coast Guard law enforcement team. This time they managed to surprise the smugglers on board. They carried out what's called a right of visit, which is a boarding and inspection operation. It's a high seas version of the police strategy of stop and frisk. Four suspected smugglers were detained and 250 kilos of cocaine and 45 kilos of pot were found on board. All in, it was worth about $11 million. It was all picked up by a US Coast Guard cutter. Then the fun began for the Canadian sailors the free-floating narco-sub was declared a hazard to navigation, and international maritime standard calls for any vessel to try and clear it. The sailors turned to C4 explosives.
their demolition destroyed and sank the Narcosub. More interceptions came in April. 1,050 kilos of coke were seized on April 4th, and three smugglers detained when the Saskatoon intercepted another suspect vessel, which tried to flee, but was caught. There is a reason why each Canadian Navy ship has a U.S. Coast Guard law enforcement team on board. The Canadian sailors arrange the interception, but the U.S. teams do the official boarding and inspection of each boat or sub they snag. You see, although at the start I compared the Narcos to pirates, the analogy isn't legally sound. If the Navy and Coast Guard ships were stopping true pirates, those maritime marauders attacking shipping and plundering seagoing vessels, well, then there would be no controversy. But international waters, after all, are just that. Not so much belonging to everyone, but rather belonging to no one. It's meant for free and unfettered navigation. The Law of the Sea and the High Seas Convention, however, that developed over centuries, accept that some activities are so loathsome that everyone has a duty to suppress them. Slavery and piracy have been the prime ones. An old British court case, in fact, declares pirates, quote, an enemy of the human race, unquote. Pirate? Hang him! Drug trafficking, however, isn't there yet. The U.S. has found ways around this. One of the simplest is if the suspect vessel's home country agrees to have the Americans stop and search it, then everything is fine, and the U.S. has agreements in place with many countries to do just that. They work with more than 40 partner nations. Another way is if the suspect vehicle isn't flying the flag of any nation. That could be a sign of piracy, and the law of the sea and UN treaties understand that this is an acceptable reason for an inquiry. And if all else fails, the Americans turned to the Maritime Drug Law Enforcement Act, which is a piece of U.S. legislation that makes smuggling in international waters a crime against the United States. That's been enough, so far at least, to satisfy U.S. courts for prosecutions, but sometimes causes controversy internationally. The bother seems worth the effort for the U.S. and Canadian governments. The goal for them is to stop the narcos as far from their borders as possible, to catch the goods while still in its concentrated bulk form, and to do it where authorities have the highest tactical advantage. A cartel might be able to outgun or outrun a police raid on the streets, but a fishing boat, homemade narco sub, or open top speedboat is no match for warships, military helicopters, and a wide radar and sonar net. The mission of the two Canadian Navy ships ended this week and are now heading home. The Canadian forces valued the coke it held bag at almost $300 million. That is actually on the low end of what is sometimes caught. Over the years of their hunting cooperation, the loads snagged have been immense. But still, with a 6 million square mile transit zone, there is a lot of space for other ships to slip through. The cat and mouse carry on. Or maybe the better analogy is big game fishing. Thanks for watching. <laughs>